Welcome back to our weekly episode number four of Learn English with Podcast, everyone. Today, we're unpacking a topic that touches virtually all of us in one way or another, social media addiction. Hey everyone, I'm Jamie. Before proceeding into this I have a kindly request you that please don't forget to like and subscribe for more fun ways to learn English with conversation practice. Hi everyone. Yeah, it's a topic that's more relevant than ever. It's fascinating, Alex, how social media has woven itself into the fabric of our daily lives, don't you think? Absolutely, Jamie. Hello everybody, I am Alex, and as always, it started as a way to connect, share, and learn from each other, but for many, it's turned into a constant need for likes, shares, and validations. It's almost like we can't put our phones down anymore. So true. I read somewhere that the average person spends about 2 hours and 24 minutes every day on social media. That's a lot of time. It's staggering when you think about it. And this habit, it's affecting our mental health, our productivity, and even our relationships. Jamie, have you ever caught yourself mindlessly scrolling through social media? Oh, more times than I'd like to admit, Alex. It's like you go on to check one thing, and suddenly, half an hour has passed, and you're still scrolling through pictures or watching videos. Exactly. It's that endless scroll mechanism, designed to keep us engaged for as long as possible. But at what cost, right? Jamie, do you think people are aware of how much time they're actually spending on social media? Some might be, but I think a lot of us are in denial. It's easier to keep scrolling than to face the reality. And let's not forget the impact on sleep. Staying up late, phone in hand, scrolling through feeds, it's a recipe for poor sleep quality. Speaking of impacts, let's dive into how it affects our real-life interactions. Remember how we used to have meaningful conversations face-to-face? Absolutely. Now, it feels like those conversations are being replaced by comments and DMs. There's something about physical presence and genuine human connection that you just can't replicate on social media. And it's not just personal relationships. It's affecting professional environments, too. Procrastination on social media is a real issue in workplaces. Definitely. But Alex, do you think there's a way to find a balance? How can we use social media responsibly without letting it control our lives? Great question, Jamie. It starts with self-awareness. Recognizing that we might have a problem is the first step. From there, setting boundaries for ourselves can be really helpful. Like limiting our daily usage or even having social media free weekends. I love that idea. Also, curating our feeds to follow accounts that inspire us or make us feel good rather than those that stir up feelings of inadequacy or anxiety could make a huge difference. Absolutely. And it's not just about reducing screen time, but also about enriching our lives outside of the digital world. Picking up hobbies, spending time in nature, connecting with friends and family in real life. Those are all fantastic points, Alex. It's about creating a life that feels fulfilling and engaging without the need for digital validation. That way, when we do use social media, it's a choice, not a compulsion. Precisely, Jamie. And speaking of choices, making the conscious decision to not check our phones first thing in the morning can set a positive tone for the day. It's about reclaiming our time and attention. And for those looking to take it a step further, there are tools and apps designed to help monitor and limit social media use. It's all about finding what works best for you. Right, and let's not forget the power of conversation just like this one we're having. Sharing experiences, struggles, and solutions can help us all feel less alone in this battle against social media addiction. That's a beautiful note to end on, Alex. It's through sharing and connection that we find strength. Let's keep this conversation going, both here on the podcast and in our lives. Absolutely, Jamie. It's about building a community that supports each other and finding that balance. You know, Alex, talking about building a community brings me to another point. The role of social media in activism and raising awareness. It's not all bad, is it? Absolutely not, Jamie. That's an excellent point. Social media has the power to unite people for common causes, spread important messages, and even initiate social change. It's a tool, and like any tool, its impact depends on how we use it. True. I guess the key is in finding that sweet spot where we're using social media as a force for good without letting it dominate our lives. 
Speaking of which, I've heard of digital detox retreats. What do you think about those, Alex? Interesting you bring that up, Jamie. Digital detox retreats where people completely unplug from digital devices for a period can be incredibly refreshing. They offer a chance to reset our relationship with technology. But of course, not everyone can access or afford to take part in these retreats. Right, it's a privilege. But perhaps we can incorporate elements of a digital detox into our daily lives. Like having an hour or two every day where we consciously decide to put our phones away and engage in other activities. Exactly, Jamie. It's about making digital wellness a part of our everyday routine. Also, be mindful of the content we consume and create, promoting positivity and meaningful engagement rather than mindless consumption. Speaking of mindfulness, Alex, what role do you think mindfulness and meditation can play in combating social media addiction? Significant roles, Jamie. Mindfulness practices can help us become more aware of our impulses to reach for our phones and mindlessly scroll through social media. By being present in the moment, we can choose to engage in more fulfilling activities that enhance our well-being. That's a powerful approach. And it also helps with managing the fear of missing out, or FOMO, which drives a lot of compulsive social media use. Recognizing that it's okay to disconnect, that the world won't end if we're not constantly online. Absolutely, Jamie. FOMO is a big driver of social media addiction. Confronting it can help us regain control over our digital lives. And you know, part of what feeds FOMO is the comparison culture on social media, constantly comparing our lives to the highlight reels of others. It's toxic, isn't it? That comparison can lead to feelings of inadequacy and anxiety. But remembering that social media often represents a curated version of reality can help mitigate those feelings. Definitely. And it's important to foster a culture of authenticity online. Sharing real, unfiltered moments can make social media a more honest and supportive space. For sure. And let's not forget, Alex, the importance of conversations like the one we're having. Open dialogues about the challenges and solutions related to social media use can help create a more mindful and intentional digital environment. Exactly, Jamie. It's all about starting the conversation and keeping it going. Encouraging each other to take those steps towards healthier digital habits and a more balanced life. Well, I think our discussion today has been incredibly insightful. It's clear that while social media has its pitfalls, with awareness and intentional action, we can navigate its challenges and make the most of the positive aspects it has to offer. Couldn't agree more, Jamie. And to our listeners, we hope you found this conversation helpful. Remember, you're not alone in feeling overwhelmed by social media. It's a collective challenge that we can address together. Right. And as we continue exploring this topic in future episodes, we'd love to hear your thoughts, experiences, and strategies for managing social media use. Together, we can learn from each other and grow. So, have you ever struggled with social media addiction? Let us know in the comments. And if you found this episode helpful, don't forget to give it a thumbs up and subscribe for more. Looking for even more English learning resources? Follow us on social media at Facebook and Instagram. Thanks for joining us, and we'll see you on the next episode of Learn English with Podcast Conversation.